everybody, how's it going? So I did that video last week where we discussed the whole idea of sending analog audio signals over network cable. I'm here in the drum room and what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna show you guys how I'm gonna clean up the cable soup I've got in here and get everything down to three network cables. So instead of you know my normal 12 mic cables, I'll just be down to three network cables. Now this is some relatively new tech that a lot of people haven't seen. So naturally there were a lot of questions and I don't mind answering questions. In my opinion, there's no such thing as a bad question. There are bad answers. And uh, just to make this show entertaining, we got some great assumptions from some people who chimed in to let us know just how witty they truly are. So I figured we'd bring a few of those comments into play as well. So before I get to rewiring the drum room here, let's take a question from Eli and uh, hopefully we can clear things up for him. Someone help me out. How is it that the snake condenses four mic cables to one and still ends up with four separate mic channels in the end? Thanks. All right, this is a clip of the other end of the network cable where it goes to another breakout box and then goes into my XLR patch base. So this whole system here has male and female ends. You take your four mic cables down to a Cat5, and then when you get to the other end, you expand it again. This, you put your Cat5 in here, Cat6, sorry, and then you go to the male end. Females plug into your mics, males go into your mic preamps, or your, I really gotta move the camera here, or your patch bay or what have you. The whole idea here is if you've got network cable going through your studio walls, uh, you can just plug into your wall and then come out the other end where your DAW is. So the idea is get these in pairs. And just remember, these don't necessarily come with the cables on them. You can get them already terminated to XLR male or female. Those are an option, but I just figured, you know, to make things super efficient so I don't got cables everywhere, I thought this would be a really cool system to use. Seems like a great product, but how do you hook it to your audio interface? Dumb question, but I feel I'm missing something obvious. Okay, not necessarily a dumb question. Once again, remember, you have an XLR output. Of it. So it converts it back to four XLRs and then you can hook those right into your audio interface, your mic preamps, or anything else that you want, either mic or line level. Did I miss something or isn't this Lix breakout also converting analog to digital to be able to send signal from XLR to Cat 5.6? Yes, sound guy. Yes, indeed, you did miss something. Can I get a replay, please? Look, here's the thumbnail, the thing that you clicked on to start the fucking video. Look at this. Analog audio over network cable? I asked that question because I figured you might be able to figure out all by yourself that this was indeed analog audio over network cable. I'm sorry I made it too subtle. I guess plain black and white block lettering just somehow got by you. Fuck! Here's the problem I see. These use standard Cat5 connectors and they can carry phantom power. Someone sees a network cable, doesn't think to ask before plugging it into their laptop. Now someone has a fried laptop, who isn't probably smart enough to have it backed up. Yeah, Dan, I can see that being a huge danger, especially considering clients never walk in and the first thing they never ask is, hey, what's the Wi-Fi password in here? That's because nobody's ever used Wi-Fi on a fucking laptop. If it'll make you happy, just put a little fucking piece of tape over your network jacks saying, warning, these carry power and will destroy your laptop. There! Problem fucking solved! Why's everything gotta be so fucking difficult? That sure sounds like a cool product, but make sure you limit your Cat 6 runs to 300 feet, assuming Lix uses Ethernet at layer 2. Any runs longer than that will introduce late collision and likely ruin your audio. It's part of the wired IEE 802.11 spec, and there's no way around it unless you introduce a switch in between. Chucky, 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 will you fucking pay attention, Chucky? What the hell? Said right in the title, analog fucking audio, okay? This does not convert to digital anywhere in the system. That's why there's only four mic cables being sent through. If we were going on a digital system, you could send probably 64 to a couple thousand, depending on what standard you were using. We're only using four because it's fucking analog. Let me say that one more time. It's analog. No conversion. Are we clear? Good. Does it work with AVB and Dante protocol? And how about latency AD conversion to jitter? Again, I don't get it. What the fuck is with some of these guys? Did you not read the fucking title analog audio? It doesn't do a conversion. Yes, you could actually use the network cable you installed for a Dante system 
or for internet or for HDMI. I've already explained that in the other video, but at its core, it is an analog system. So you don't have to worry about any of that shit. Seriously, guys, stop humping doorknobs and pay attention. Save yourself trouble. Install Cat7 runs. Cat7 has shielding for each individual wire pair within the cable and the cable as a whole. It barely costs more than Cat6A, that is the current recommended new home spec. They always recommend the current sweet spot. As both audio engineer and senior network technician, I can say Cat7 is a low cost, huge upgrade. Now that actually sounds like some great advice and I didn't know that Cat7 cable had the individual shields. That's really fucking cool. Marvel Jam, thank you so much for sharing that valuable information. I learned something here. I'm always happy to learn new stuff. Uh, the only caveat was I looked up some prices for Cat7 cable reels for about a thousand feet, it's about 500 bucks. So uh, the price advantage kind of dwindles. I don't think it's a case of that much more like, it's more like a case of, holy fuck, that's a lot more money. So, you know, proceed with caution. Uh, when I do a studio build, I'm probably gonna go with Shielded Cat 6. I'm gonna dig around, see what I can find, um, see if Anthony Kazoob's got some advice on where to find some inexpensive cable in Canada to do the job, but I'm definitely looking forward to keeping you guys in the loop on that whole build and show you how it goes. Okay, so here's the drum kit, and this is what we gotta, gotta get down into three cables. We've got two overheads, three toms, Three signal sources on the kick. We've got the Lewitt Rex mic, which is dual element, and then we've got the sub kick as well. We've got two snare mics, and we've even got two room mics. We've got a couple of Lewitt condensers off in the corners in this very small drum room. And yeah, just all kinds of cable soup everywhere. So I'm really looking forward to stripping all this stuff down and getting it down to three cables and just cleaning this room up. This has been the bane of my existence since about 2003, since I moved into this room. So let's commence with the time lapse and I'll show you what happens. All right, so now we've got the system installed. I'll just take you on a quick little tour here, show you what we've got it down to and show you just how much cleaner this whole thing is. So we've got this whole thing down to three network junction boxes. I've just got one strapped here to the drum rack with just a simple cable tie. And we're coming out with a simple Cat6 network cable. I wanna thank my friends at Hosea Cable for supplying the cables. Uh, they're absolutely great. Again, shielded cable is the way to go. That way the phantom power will work for the overheads and the room mics. So we've got one here. This is two toms and my snare top and bottom mic. We've got junction box number two and that's three kick mics and a tom mic. And lastly, we've got another box strapped here and that's both my overheads and two room mics all going now we've got a couple of network cables a couple of mic cables here they're all coming out out of two junction boxes and they're going to the xlr patch bay and that's going to the control room now my kick mics and the floor tom are going down this network cable to this patch bay right here we've got an exit cable as well and that's going into this xlr patch bay here the entire room has been cleaned up and it's looking so much better, so much cleaner, and there's so much less cable to trip over. It's absolutely great. I'm really happy with the setup now. And here's all of the mic cable that I pulled off the kit. So now I just get to look forward to coiling all this up and finding somewhere to put it. All right, so that is how I got 12 mic cables down to three network cables and cleaned up my drum room massively. I'll have some links for the Lix system in the description below. And if you're in Europe, I'd highly recommend checking out the Toman Snake system. Again, links for that in the description below. Those are affiliate links, so do me a favor, click on them so I can pay my bills. Uh, once again, just keep in mind, you want shielded Cat6 network cable that way it will work with phantom power and you can power your condenser mics very 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 important and if you are going to run a home network install and convert it for analog audio use put a little warning sign on your network patch bay phantom power might be going through this and plugging your laptop into it will damage it severely put a little warning sign on that chances are musicians might be able to read that and make sense of it and not destroy their computers all right, that's it for this episode. Thanks so much for watching. You guys got any more questions, please watch the video first all the way through. Hopefully I already answered them. That tends to be a big thing on this show. Hey, how about this? Oh, you mean the thing I just fucking answered? Yeah, 
I love answering those questions. Now, if I didn't answer your question in the video, feel free to leave a comment or a question below because I love hearing from you guys. Thanks again. I'll see you guys next time.